Welcome all. As you no doubt uh, guess from the title of this video and what you can see in front of you, especially that, um, I'll be talking about my new uh, Flycam Galaxy Vest that I will be using with my gimbal and uh, Pocket 4K. And here comes the hot dog. Right. Okay, now I did initially look at uh, using my uh, Easy Rig clone to, uh, to carry the gimbal and the camera, but uh, there are only really two options available uh, to do that. And uh, one was to invert the gimbal itself, which was problematic because it meant all the controls were going to be reversed and hard to, uh, to reach. And so that was pretty much out of the question. The other option was to use a, uh, a, a ring that you can get for these things that uh, enable you to put the, uh, the gimbal onto a, a frame and uh, use it that way. But uh, that just made the whole thing uh, a lot bigger than uh, what I really wanted it to be. And uh, you still don't get the ability to move around very easily with it. You will still get that bobbing up and down, even with minor movements uh, uh, when you're walking around and so on. So that really was uh, something that I did want to do. So I did a lot of research um, on YouTube and elsewhere and uh, tried to look for uh, the options with uh, such things as the uh, Steadicam best and so on. There are a lot of videos out there with the Steadicam, with using the, the actual arm itself, uh, which is the original type Steadicam that was invented around about 75 or so. Um, and there are more people using gimbals, the motorised gimbals, uh, with uh, Steadicam bests and the like and the Flycam bests and other brands very, very similar. But uh, they usually use the stick gimbals and then they also attach those either to a glide cam or they attach an extension uh, uh, rod to the base of the, uh, the gimbal arm so that uh, it sort of emulates the glide cam. And generally they all use uh, fairly lightweight cameras, you know, just a, a mirrorless or hybrid camera and uh, not much else. And it was getting very frustrating uh, until I found one uh, user who I'll link to in this video who actually uses a Crane 3S with a, uh, a Flycam variant and uh, uh, also an Ursa uh, 4K, I believe it was, and seemed to have fairly good success with that combination. Now, they went about it slightly different to, uh, to what I did um, as far as the arm goes because they had a different sort of an arm, and uh, that sort of uh, led me to, uh, to do things a little bit differently. Now, the reason I got the Flycam was that I, uh, after researching various uh, brands and so on, I found one on B&H for about half the price or less than half the price of what they were in Australia, so I thought I'd give it a go. And as it turns out, the, uh, the Flycam is a pro-aim brand, and uh, that's made in India. And not entirely surprised with that, because India has a huge uh, movie industry, so it makes sense to have a, uh, an industry that supports that with professional uh, support gear and so on. And uh, the Pro-aim catalogue is absolutely huge if you go and have a look at it. But that aside, I'll go first off through the... Uh, the way that I set this up um, to take the gimbal and the camera and uh, talk about some of the, the, the qualities of it. Then I'll show a uh, short video uh, of the fly cam in use. I haven't really had a lot of time to practice with it and, I, and I'll talk about some of the issues after uh, the video to give you an idea of uh, some of the, the problems, perhaps, if you want to call it that, that you will encounter if you use this sort of a setup with a uh, camera and a gimbal. The first thing is that the product itself is fairly good quality. Um, I've got no real gripes with the vest. Um, there are a couple of issues there that uh, I think uh, could have been better uh, produced. Um, the first thing and the only thing really that is of a major concern is the, uh, the way the straps uh, are adjusted. You really need two people to ideally get them tensioned properly uh, because the way they're, they're uh, uh, built is that they're on Velcro straps which is okay. Uh, the buckles are okay, but there's no sort of easy way of tensioning them. You've got to sort of pull on them yourself or basically have someone else to tighten them up for you. So I think that could have been better implemented. Looking at some of the Steadicam vests, which cost significantly more, they actually have buckles and things which can be tensioned and then locked in and adjusted even more. So the design is obviously different, but you're looking at a much, much greater price. Uh, in Australia, for those sort of models, almost six, ten times the price virtually. But otherwise, it's quite good. The only other sort of issue that I've got is with the, the neck support here or the, the shoulder support. The padding here is probably, in my view, just a little bit too tight, much, uh, uh, made from a much narrower neck, and there's no adjustment capability on, on this particular model, so you can't sort of twist these things out as you can in some uh, 
uh, vests. Um, if a uh, NRL rugby player was wearing this, he'd probably uh, keel over because the carotid, carotid veins would probably be blocked. Um, it's OK for me. It's not uncomfortable, um, but it's just something that could have been a, a little bit better. But overall, the quality of the manufacturer, and that uh, seems to be very good. Now, getting on to the arm, um, this exact is in fact quite well made. It's very, very solid. Um, I had to change the springs in them to the heavier load. Um, it wasn't a big chore. Uh, some of the instructions that uh, are on YouTube and that are a bit uh, iffy, but uh, it wasn't difficult to figure out. And generally, as I said, the quality is uh, very, very good. Very solid looking uh, hinges and so on in it. And it attaches quite easily to the, to the unit itself. The support thing has a uh, screw mount uh, in here which can lock the, uh, the arm in place. I've taken it off because there's no way this is going to fall out with the, uh, the weight that I've got on it. I'm not about to hang upside down anywhere um, with it, so it's pretty much superfluous in my view. But otherwise, um, the whole thing works quite well. I don't know why all these arms have to be so floppy. Um, I wish they had a little bit of uh, friction to them, like the, uh, the support uh, right up the top here. This is actually quite a good fluid motion to it. If these had the same uh, sort of fluid motion, I think they'd still operate quite well um, but, uh, and wouldn't just flop around so easily. So you've got to be really careful with this when you're handling it uh, with or without a camera so it doesn't bash against things because it's very easy to just flop around like that. But as I've noted on the videos, all of them are very much the same. So that's just one of those things that you've got to live with and be aware of all the time. Now, the issue there was uh, that I had was how to mount the, uh, the gimbal onto the, uh, the, the arm itself. Um, and I went looking into my little uh, box of junk and uh, used pieces or unused pieces and came up with a little uh, trial monopod head that came with my serial, serial uh, monopod. It was actually a second part to it because you can take the tripod foot off and then attach that on there and uh, it gives you a tabletop tripod. So there's two of those and I don't intend to do that. So that was perfect because it had a 3 8 uh, uh, thread on it. I'll just move this out of the way. And then for the base or the support, I had a uh, spare small rig uh, handle. I took the end piece off the, uh, the handle itself, drilled a hole in it and uh, tapped the 3 8 uh, thread in there. And that then just screwed straight onto the, uh, the head of the, uh, from the monopod. And it was a perfect uh, uh, sort of fit. And just to make it look a little bit more shopboard, I found I had a uh, cup from a 75mm half ball that I just had no use for. And that fitted in perfectly in there with just a little bit of modification to the hole. Um, so that now sort of looks almost like a shopboard thing. I cut the, uh, the handle itself roughly in half because otherwise it was too long. And the internal diameter of this was 20mm, uh, whereas the support pivot or the pin on that uh, arm is 16 So I had to reduce that. And so I just went to our local hardware store, which carries a lot of uh, agricultural uh, fittings, all uh, so generally plastic and so forth. And there was a 20mm riser there that was perfect fit for the inside of the tube. Uh, nice friction fit, and as it turns out, it also had an internal diameter of 16 mil. so that is just perfect for putting onto there. It just fits in there and moves about nicely, gives a bit of a, uh, a bearing surface with the plastic, so it's not metal against metal, and uh, it's, it's ideal. So that's what I did with that, and I'll just show you now how this all sort of comes together. If I can avoid whacking things with that floppy arm. Normally, if I'm going anywhere, I'd already have this attached. But uh, for information purposes, I just thought I'd show you how it works. So that's the arm now with the, the holder or the mount. And that now sort of fits in there quite nicely. It moves around easily. There's no sort of looseness to it. So it's uh, a perfect fit. Now to put the camera on. I'll probably be invisible for a while, but that's okay. It's actually almost easier to put the camera onto the gimbal this way than it is in the normal circumstances. So I'll just see if I can get it balanced. Not quite. That's close enough. So that actually isn't too difficult to balance there. Do the pit uh, yaw and the uh, roll arm, and she's quite nicely balanced. I'll turn it on and find the switch. There 
and she's on. Now, that now is, I don't know if it's perfectly balanced and I'll talk about that shortly, but it's actually quite comfortable. Um, I'm sitting down now, so if you're able to sit down with uh, the vest and the whole rig on, then you've actually got the, the vest pretty well uh, uh, mounted. You should be able to move your legs up and down when you're standing up quite easily. Um, if it's blocking that movement, then uh, it's not really good. And sitting down is uh, a good way to sort of see that uh, it actually works. I could have done this standing up, but uh, I thought sitting down is going to be just as uh, informative, um, um, if not more so. And balancing, I'm going to talk about the balancing is issues after I've shown the video, but as you can see, I can hold eight and a half kilos virtually now, just up like that without any effort. And move it about. Now there are two ways of possibly doing this. Um, one is with the arm as it is at the, at the way at the moment where you can move it around or you can possibly bring it in in that fashion. Uh, I'm not really sure if there is an absolute correct way to do it. It's whatever works for you and uh, I put some little rubber bits into the front of the uh, thing to pat it out if I do use it this way and I'm still experimenting so I still can't sort of say which is going to be more comfortable. But if you're indoors in narrow confined areas, this way is likely to be better because you're not going to be bashing the arm against the walls and things like that and doorways, which you will when you do that because you've doubled your width and uh, just walking around at home, testing it out. I've banged it quite a few times on, uh, on the door frames and so forth. So when you're in closed environments, I think that will work just as fine. Uh, whether the working, walking aspects are going to be as good, I'm still sort of trying to figure out exactly what uh, works and what doesn't. So you'll just have to bear with the quality of the video. So I'll show the video now, and then I'll talk about some of the uh, aspects that uh, uh, I think need to be taken into account uh, with a vest of this sort of nature. Okay, now that was the video. Uh, take it as you will. It's not too bad. 
It's certainly uh, uh, not absolutely fluid or anything like that, so, but uh, I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm not going to be going and walking that sort of uh, activity that you saw in the video up and down those hills and uh, whatever in normal circumstances. Mine will be uh, more stationary work with a little bit of movement sideways and maybe forwards and so on. And the reason that I really got this was to be able to support the camera for, for a number of hours, whereas just holding the, the gimbal and the camera on itself uh, would really get tiring very, very quickly. Uh, I mean, while I can use it for half an hour or so, to use it for hours on end, I think, would be a real issue. So I needed something to sort of hold the weight and allowed me to uh, do a little bit better video when I'm sort of holding the camera so I can go uh, either up high if I want to and do sort of motions like that or go low or whatever. So there's always different ways that you can... Now it's gone into a vortex mode. There we go. So the ability to actually go down very low, bring the camera up gently. If you're wanting to do sort of uh, uh, vertical panning, you can even do sideways panning, almost like having a slider. I think that would come with a lot of practice. You can get this thing to work quite well. But the ideal thing for me is it just provides a good degree of support, takes that load off the, uh, the, the arms and so forth for long sessions. Now the problem with all of these vests, not just this one, is that there's so little information on how to balance them. I can't believe that it's just uh, so scarce. And some other people on videos that I've had some discussions with have found exactly the same problem. A Steadicam, the uh, Tiffin brand name uh, vest, exactly the same problem exists there. There's so little information on how to actually balance and set these things up. There's one uh, uh, YouTube channel that actually talked about the vest positioning, but it's talking about the actual Steadicam vest, which is a little bit different to this. So I think through a process of osmosis, I've sort of worked out how to set up this vest so that it actually supports the whole uh, assembly reasonably well and is properly balanced but I really don't know whether that's still the best uh, positioning that I've got. It doesn't, this vest doesn't have uh, side uh, padding and I found a solution to that but I'm still waiting for them to arrive and that's basically the padding from uh, a shoulder mount that uh, I've got on one unit of and I tried it out uh, just as a test on one side and it actually does provide a bit more support. Uh, so I've ordered a second one and I'm just waiting for that. So I don't know when that's going to come because of COVID. So I didn't want to hold this video up too long. And the other issue with, with this is the actual positioning of the arm. Uh, there's very little information, almost zero, on what is the correct uh, tensioning that you need to put for this arm to hold the, the camera and assembly up properly. So uh, there's various uh, things that I've come across. Some say you've got to have a five or ten degree uh, angle vertically on both arms. Some say it's got to be level. I see some videos where people are actually having the arms quite low um, and that's where they sort of, it, it's the balance point. So I really don't know and to me that's annoying that uh, there's so little information about and uh, believe me I've scoured the YouTube and the internet, uh, looked at the operations manuals for steady cams and all the rest and they all vary tremendously. Uh, you would think that there would be a simple positioning thing that you could actually utilise and say, OK, that's where it should be, ideally. Uh, but there isn't. So what I've been doing is experimenting and I haven't really had uh, a great time of uh, working out yet what works and what doesn't. So I'm not too sure uh, whether I've got it right or wrong. So it's going to take quite a bit of time to, uh, to sort this out. Now, otherwise, it works quite well. I'm really happy with the way it operates. I think one thing everyone should be aware of is that when you get this unit set up and all the rest, it just doesn't totally take all the weight uh, positioning off you. It, it takes the weight off, but depending on what your posture's been like, um, you can feel it. Um, so when I first put this thing on, obviously the vest and everything else was quite incorrect. I did sort of strain a few muscles in my back for a couple of days uh, because I obviously didn't have it all set up right. And I found that uh, you really do need to sort of uh, manage your posture when you're walking around, when you're upright holding this. 
so that doesn't put uh, the strain on your body that you're likely to get. So that's one of those things that uh, you need to be aware of. And it's not a problem. It's not a fact of the, the vest itself. Uh, it's your own body uh, that uh, hasn't sort of uh, been tuned to this sort of uh, device. The Easy Rig uh, creates similar problems, but in a different way. So again, um, none of these items or support systems uh, are perfect when it comes to that. And you just need to adjust to it. But otherwise, I'm very happy with this. It works well but it's going to take quite a bit of time for me to actually get totally used to it and work out uh, uh, how best or how to get the best out of it in the various situations that I'll be working. And one sort of final point is that this vest itself, it does get quite warm. So if you're working in very, very hot environments, uh, you'll be sweating and feeling it uh, very quickly, whether you've got a shirt or a T-shirt on or not. For colder weather use, I reckon it'll be great because it'll keep your uh, back and so on quite warm. But uh, otherwise, it is uh, quite, a, quite a sweaty uh, uh, unit to have on, on board. But that's all I wanted to talk about uh, uh, so far. And I'll give some more feedback uh, on this as time goes on and uh, hopefully show some more videos of uh, the unit as I get more proficient with uh, operating it. And we'll see how it all goes. So on that note, I'll just say cheers.